So today we are going to be doing an ask me anything, which means you can ask any questions that you're, that you have about starting or growing a successful freight brokerage or freight agency. So without further ado, how can I go about getting a shipper's list? All right. Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. One, you can go online and you could go to some free resources like Thomas Registry, which is a database of manufacturers, distributors, producers, people that make and ship stuff. You can search by industry or by product type and you can compile a list of companies that way. That's a free way to do it, okay? There are other databases online that you can purchase, manufacturers databases, uh, produce shipper databases, different databases that you can buy. Now those database, the price of those databases can vary from a few hundred to $10,000 or more based upon who's selling it, the type of data that they're including with it. So you can buy a database, right? The other way you can do it is if you join Freight Broker Bootcamp, which is my startup program, right? Whether you're a gold or platinum member, you can check that out at FreightBrokerBootCamp.com. We include a shipper database of over 350,000 shippers in the US. Now, some of them are out of business because of course, you know, you have new businesses going out, you have businesses going out of business all the time, you have businesses consolidating, changing, the market's changing. So, but there are hundreds of thousands of active shippers in that database. If you are a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, you can get that for free. It's a bonus that we include in there. You can search and compile lists from that database any way you want. So that's how you would create a list. Another way you could do it is use a source like LinkedIn. You could do um, some research on LinkedIn. It's a little bit more time consuming, but the data is usually pretty good, pretty accurate based upon the type of companies that you're looking for and the niche that you're in. So those are, that's four different ways that you could start developing your shipper list. Okay, so Lil TZ asks, do I need to be very educated to talk to a shipper? All right, so, let me answer this question this way. Education is important when you're starting a business or when you're starting a new job. But here's what I want you to understand. This is not about formal education, meaning the only thing you have to do in order to become a freight broker is literally graduate from high school or have a GED equivalent. A freight agent, to be honest with you, you don't even need that unless the broker requires it. You do not need a four-year degree. You do not need a master's degree. You do not need a PhD. You do not need to pass some sort of crazy exam in order to become a freight broker or freight agent. So you don't need formal education, but you are going to want to be educated about the industry, about how freight brokerage works, about the niche that you're pursuing. And that's the reason why I put together Freight Broker Bootcamp over a decade ago. That's why I've trained over 10,000 students. And that's the reason why I offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Um, if it doesn't serve you, if you're not happy with Freight Burger Bootcamp, just send us a message and we will refund 100% of your purchase price. No, no issues, okay? So it's not about formal education, but you will need to have some education about the process of brokering, how to quote lanes. You're going to need to understand a little bit about your niche. You're going to need to speak the lingo. That's what Freight Burger Bootcamp is all about. So I hope that helps. Good question. Okay. Good question from Victor Blanco. How to quote partial load reefer dry van. All right. So I'm going to focus on dry van. Reefer is a lot more challenging to, to quote partial loads because there's brake bulks and there's different temperature requirements and there's all kinds of crazy things associated with trying to ship partial or LTL refrigerated freight. It's very, very it's a lot more complex, okay? But we're gonna start, we'll, I'll give you an example of how you might approach quoting partial dry van loads, all right? So let's take a look at this. The first thing you need to do in order to understand how to quote a partial load, and just so you guys know, there's LTL shipments, which is typically shipments, you know, we'll call it under a few thousand pounds. There's partial shipment or there's full truckload shipments, which is where you're taking a dedicated truck, like a 53 foot trailer, and it's dedicated exclusively to you. Or you can do what's uh, known as a partial, where you will take a, a percentage of the truck, typically at least a quarter to a half or maybe three quarters of a truck, but typically quarters and half trucks is what partials run in those types of sizes, right? The most important part of understanding how to run a partial load is understanding the cost of a full truckload in that same lane. 
So if you were going to run a full truckload from Buffalo to Atlanta and it was a van load, if you determined your cost for that load was just for easy math, $2,000 for a full truckload, okay? It's natural for people to think, okay, well, if $2,000 for a full truckload, then it would be $1,000 for a half truckload, but that's not true, okay? That's not true. That's not how it will work. So there is no exact science for this, okay? There is no exact math equation, but I'm going to give you a general rule of thumb, okay? And here's how it works. What you will do is you will slide the scale slightly based upon the size of the truck. So what I mean by that is if you have a, if you know the truckload cost is $2,000 $2, and you're looking for a quarter truck and a half truck rate, what you would do is you would add 50% onto the exact math equation. So for example, a quarter truck would go for a thousand and a half truck would go for 1500. So if 2000 for the full truck load, you would do 1500 approximately for a half truck and you would do a thousand for a quarter truck. That's the key. So the key is that you need to leave yourself enough margin because you got to remember you're not going to find as many carriers that haul partial loads as you do full truck loads. Most carriers want to haul full truck loads. They want full truck, one pick, one drop, easy on, easy off. That's what they want. High rates, right? So partial truck loads, the advantage to partial truck loads is it allows the carrier to make more per mile than a full truck load. And so there's a little bit of a price delta there. So the price will go up. So I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'll put together a special training on that. I think that would be a good training to have. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. So Deshante asks, how do I go about getting customers? Well, there's a lot of ways you can get customers. One way that people do it is they tap into their existing network, people that they know. They ask for referrals from people that they know or from ex you know, existing relationships. But the way that most freight brokers start out is by doing what's called sales, right? So you're doing freight broker sales. That means you're either doing some sort of cold or warm outreach over the phone, via email, face-to-face, -face, through LinkedIn. Those are the four most common ways that freight brokers will start a conversation with their target market and in order to develop a relationship and get them as a customer, okay? So those are the primary ways Tap into your network, get referrals, or do outreach, sales outreach. Sales outreach comes from phone, email, LinkedIn, or face-to-face. -face. Those are the four most common. So I hope that helps. I get this question all the time. Where do you see the market going for 2023? Is this the right time to start a freight brokerage? Well, let me start with this. There is no perfect time to start a business. And let me explain to you why I say that. Because this is what markets always do. They always do this. If you look at the freight market over the last 20 years, there's ups, there's downs, there's peaks, there's, there's valleys. If you look at the tech market, there's ups, there's downs, there's peak, there's value, valleys. If you look at the real estate market, there's ups, there's downs, there's peaks, there's valleys, right? You get my point. So what I want you to understand is there is no perfect time to start a business in any industry. But in my personal opinion, I believe you're better to start it in a valley than at a peak because here's why. If you can make money in, a, in the valley, if you can start your business in a, in a downturn or in a flat, if the market is in a flat trajectory and you can build your customer acquisition processes and you can run a profitable business in that market, when the market goes up, it'll only be, you know, it'll be a gangbuster, right? So you'll do extremely well. But if you start at the peak or the most availability of freight, when things get tight, your systems and processes will not optimize to that. So that's one example. The other thing is, I truly believe that as a startup, you have a huge, huge advantage over large companies that already have been around for decades. Here's why. And that may sound weird to you, but I think you have a huge advantage because number one, your overhead is very, very low. Number two, your motivation is very, very high. There are a lot of reasons, but I believe, now my prediction for the market, listen, I don't have a crystal ball, but if my best guesstimate is that the market is going to be flat 
it'll be flat throughout 2023. So where it's at right now, it'll probably be pretty flat. And then sometime in 2024, it will start to rebound. That's my prediction. You ask for it. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't guarantee it. But if I were a betting man, that's what I would do. Okay. Because we've already seen a significant drop. Some of that having to do obviously with global economics and global policy and economic policy and supply and demand and all of that. Right. Okay. So I hope that helps. So Dennis Brown. <laughs> hey, I like the guy already. To whom should I reach out to for the container drayage business as a freight agent? All right. So if you are doing drayage for containers, you are going to need to be talking to companies that have imports or exports typically. Now you could also do it with the rail, right? You can do, you could do drayage for the rail, but it's typically going to be drayage for rail or drayage for ocean freight. So you're either going to need to find companies that have rail freight or ocean freight, which is import export. The companies that have that uh, the manufacturers, distrib distributors, producers, those people are importers and exporters. If you are a steel manufacturer in the United States, there's a good chance you're exporting some of that product. Some of that product staying domestic, but a lot of that product is probably getting exported. So that means it's got to go on a ship, right? So in order to get it on a ship, they got to take it from your location in a container. They got to bring it to the port. It means you get loaded on the ship. It goes across the ocean, goes into another port. It's offloaded as a container and delivered to the final location. That's what an ocean, intermodal ocean freight looks like. And that's how the containers would work. So you're going to look for importers and exporters. The other thing you can do as a, if you're in the drayage niche, is you can work directly with international freight forwarders. Now, this would be more of a co-brokering relationship, but they would be your customer. So you could reach out to international freight forwarders and let them know that you do drayage out of these ports and that you'd love to work with them and develop a relationship, right? So, you know, it's a sales job. It's still sales, whether you're talking to a uh, international freight forwarder or whether you're talking to Pepsi or whether you're talking to any importer exporter, you still have to go through the sales process, but that's who would be your target market. So you would go direct to shippers that are importers and exporters, or you would go to international freight forwarders and you would develop a relationship with them and you would basically co-broker with them, but they would be your customer. You would be delivering the drayage and they would outsource it to you. So those are a couple ideas. Hope that helps. Okay, so Sheila asks, is it crucial getting insurance for your brokerage in order to provide that to clients? No, it's not. As a freight broker, you are not required to get general liability, cargo, errors and emissions. You're not required by law to have any of those insurance, number one. In order to get your freight brokers, you do not need that. As a freight agent, you need none of that either, okay? So just understand that up front. Now, I started my freight brokerage and many of my students have started their freight brokerage with no insurance, no liability, general liability, and no contingent cargo. Some of them choose to get one or both, but it's not required. There are plenty of shippers out there that do not require either one of those things in order to do business with them. Now, what my suggestion is, is that if cash is tight, then my suggestion is go out and get a shipper and then use those profits to help finance that type of insurance when you need it. So if you're running into shippers that are telling you they give you their business, if you had contingent cargo, then all of a sudden it might be a good investment because it's a math equation. If contingent cargo costs you a couple thousand bucks a year, then all of a sudden now you've financed the cost of that by using other people's money, right? So you've now generated profits to reinvest into the business. So that's a good way to approach it. Now, if you do have good financial resources and cash flow or whatever the case may be, contingent cargo might be a good investment, but it's only a good investment if you are running into shippers that are telling you that they require it. Because I can tell you, and nobody believes me, but the majority of shippers do not require brokers to have contingent cargo because they understand that the contingent cargo really doesn't mean much as long as the carrier has primary cargo. So if the broker vets the carrier and ensures that they have primary cargo coverage that will cover their type of freight, they have the dollar value requirements, there's no exclusions for their type of freight, there's no issues, then it's not an issue, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I hope that under I hope you understand. Uh, Santi asks, hey, Dennis, I just got terminated for my job, but love the freight business. Should I take the leap of faith? You know, Santi, I can't make that decision for you, but all I can tell you is I took the leap of faith. Back in 2003, I had zero experience as a freight broker, 
in transportation, trucking, or logistics. I mean, when I say zero, you know way more now than I did when I first got started in 2003. Went on to do over $200 million as a freight broker. Very, 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 very blessed. Okay. I've also trained many, many students who had zero experience and went on to grow very successful businesses. Now, I can't promise you success. I can't guarantee you success. Here's what I can guarantee you. That if you are a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, you will be able to dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and you will have more than enough information and systems and tools in order to start a successful freight broker. Now, whether you will or you won't, that's up to you. As far as taking the leap, that's a personal choice, right? Look at your financial situation. Look at your, you know, your personal and family situation. Look at the variables around you. Do you have the support? Are you truly passionate about starting and running your own business. And if you are, do it. Because the older you get and the more time that passes, the harder it gets. You're in a situation right now where you're unemployed. It would have been probably very difficult for you to quit that job to start a business because you had cash flow. But now your risk is lower. Why is your risk lower? Because you can't lose a job you've already lost, right? Those are my two, that's my two cents. Hope it helps. Okay, my niche is power only. How do I find power only shippers? Well, power only shippers are typically hauling their commodity that they are hauling is typically trailers. So they're moving trailers for either manufacturers of trailers that need those trailers moved or for companies that need, have trailers that they need moved from one location to another. So you need to find companies that make trailers or own trailers and need them moved. That's your target. So your target for power only is typically companies that need trailers moved. That is the commodity. Okay. So they may be using them and moving them for their own need, or they may be, it may be a part of the supply chain as they're selling those trailers. So I hope that helps. Okay. Bass asks, when can I start accepting loads as a broker? Well, as, as soon as you get your freight broker authority deemed active by the FMCSA, you are a licensed broker. You have your freight broker authority. At that point, you are licensed to broker freight in the United States. So you have to have an active break freight broker authority. So if you've submitted your application and you've submitted all the requirements to get your freight broker authority, but you still have not gotten notified that it's active, okay? You've got your MC number, you've sent in all the documentation. You now have what's called an inactive authority, but it needs to be deemed active. That take usually takes somewhere between three and five weeks in order to get that completed, but you will get notified by email typically. You'll also get something probably in the mail that lets you know that you are now active. And at that point, you can now start brokering loads legally. Good question. Gail Edwards, what is the length of your Freightburger Bootcamp program? Okay, so the Freightburger Bootcamp is a go at your own pace online training program. It's not a live program. You don't have to wait for me to come in every week and teach you. Once you enroll in Freight Broker Bootcamp, you get instant access to all of the training resources, all of the bonuses, everything. Okay. Most students are able to complete the Freight Broker Bootcamp in somewhere between four to eight hours of time over a two to four week period of time. Now that's not how long it takes. That's how long most students take to do it. Some people go through it very, very quickly. They digest the information very quickly. Some people consume and digest information slower. Assume four to eight hours of, of actual time, study time, over a two to four week period of time is very reasonable. If your schedule does not afford that, then you can take weeks or months or years to complete the training, depending upon how you want to approach it. So you go at your own pace. That's the, one of the great things about Freightburger Bootcamp is that you're not, you don't have to meet some stringent pace. You can do it at your own pace. Okay. So I hope that helps. Uh, Mark Townsend says, do you need your Freightburger license before you get your certi bond? No. But I do suggest that you submit your freight broker application to the FMCSA. So you will submit a freight broker application, which will at that point, you will get issued an MC number. Then what you do is you go out and get your freight broker bond. They're going to ask you your MC number. And at that point, once you're approved, they will directly report back to the FMCSA that you have met the bonding requirements, which is one of the key requirements in order to get your freight broker authority deemed active. Okay. There's some other things in there too. complete your freight broker application on the FMCSA and then get your bond because you'll have an inactive MC number. I go through all of this in the training as a freight broker bootcamp member. Okay.
Okay, Roberto Lopez says, how should I quote a hazmat load to a customer? You're going to quote a hazmat load to a customer the same way as you're going to quote a, a regular dry van load. The only difference is you're going to, the information that you are going to source is going to be based on hazmat equipment. So if you are sourcing rate intelligence from different tools, then you're going to make sure that that can give you hazmat rates or you are going to be, and or you're going to be talking to carriers that have hazmat equipment because there may be a difference in price for hazmat versus regular van. Most hazmat freight goes in a van. It can also go in tankers, but a lot of it goes in a van. And if it's a liquid, obviously it's going to have to go in a tanker in most cases. But yeah, if you're doing hazmat and it's going in a van, it's hazmat van loads. And you got to understand there are less carriers that have their hazmat placard or are certified to call has carry hazmat than there are just regular van loads. So there's going to be less supply of trucks. So that could potentially increase the rates, but you want to make sure you source the correct information, but you'll quote it the same way. Uh, Hatim asks, should I take the Freightburger Sales Accelerator program even though I didn't take the Freightburger Bootcamp program? You absolutely can. It depends upon where you are in your journey. Here's what I can tell you. Some people need some assistance connecting the dots in order to get started, to do their startup plan, to get their authority, to set up their office, to identify their niche, to understand basic customer acquisition strategies, right? Some people need assistance there. And that's what Freightburger Bootcamp is for. It's a step-by-step -step process. But some people don't necessarily need that, but they do want the advanced sales strategies, tactics, tools in my entire system. So I have a lot of people that didn't go through Freightburger Bootcamp that actually bought the Freightburger Sales Accelerator. But I also have a lot of people who graduated from Freightburger Bootcamp who then moved on to the Accelerator. So you are not required to be a part of Freightburger Bootcamp before you join the Sales Accelerator. But if you have not, don't have the preliminary and basic information of getting started as a freight broker, and you don't have that fundamental in information and education wherever you got it from, then I wouldn't recommend Freightburger Bootcamp or Freightburger Sales Accelerator because we're going to be talking about things that are fundamental to under you, that you'll need to understand fundamentally about the freight brokerage business in order to apply it in the sales environment, if that makes sense. Good question. And I can tell you, it's a good time to mention it. The Freight Broker Sales Accelerator is now open for enrollment. I told you earlier, but the only way you can do it, you got to get on the wait list. Freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Get enrolled. Get on the, get on the wait list. And then within a short period of time, You'll get a message from us. You'll be able to click and see all the details. You'll be able to see everything that's included, all of the options. Uh, you'll be able to see the price. You'll be able to see everything that's included once you get that link. And then you'll be able to enroll or not enroll. If you choose not to enroll, that's fine. No big deal. Costs you nothing. But if you do get enrolled, I'll be able to take that piece of my brain and transplant it into your help and help you implement it over a five-week coaching program, okay? That's where I become your freight coach and mentor, all right? Hope that helps. Okay, Wayfast Logistics says, Dennis, one question. If you have 20K cash, should you still look for a factoring company? And do you think 20K is enough to start? And if yes, what companies do you recommend for brokers? 20K is more than enough to get started, depending upon your growth rate. Like, for example, if the average truckload is 1500 bucks and you run 10 truckloads in your first month, the maximum outflow of cash is $15,000. But in month three, if you're doing 30 loads at 1500, your maximum cash is 45,000. That's your cash flow number, basically. Right? Well, it would actually be a little less than that based upon what you're paying the carrier. So it's more than enough to get started, but it depends upon how quickly you're going to grow. My suggestion is if you have that cash, leverage that cash and grow the business without taking a discount or it costing you for factoring. But if you do decide to do factoring, then the one that the community likes the most, the one that I never did factoring, Okay. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have enough cash and enough, uh, established enough credit line that we were able to do it on our own, but that's not everybody's case. So the one that everybody likes in the community is denim D E N I M. Okay. Uh, D E N I M.com. I think is what it is. Denim. That's the one that most of the community points to. There are some other ones as well, but that's probably the one that I hear most. Okay. Regina. So, uh, my question is my niche is cargo sprinter vans and box trucks. How would I go about finding shippers? Well, a lot of times that is an expedited load. That's where those sprinter vans, cargo vans, and, um, and box trucks will go for. It'll be like an expedited freight. 
So that's someplace you might want to go look for companies that need and require expedited freight. That can be challenging sometimes though to identify. It's typically going to be smaller shipments. You're not looking at full truckload shipments. You're looking at one pallet, two pallets, you know, maybe five or six pallets, something like that. You're not looking for heavy weight or large volume. You're looking for smaller volume. So LTL, if you're doing local or regional stuff, um, you know, companies that would be local to your geography or specific to the niche that you're serving. So if I were in Buffalo, I would hit a bunch of shippers here in the Buffalo area. I would let them know that that's the equipment and what I, my niche and I specialize in. And then I would develop that relationship and, and uh, try to ascertain if they have a need, right? At that point, that's how you're going to develop that report. You're going to have to kick some tires and figure out whether they have a need. But there are a lot more companies that need LTL than need full truckload, okay? The volume, especially on a local market, um, if you're talking about a regional market of 100 to maybe 300 miles, there's a lot more LTL shipments than full truckload shipments. So yeah, that's where I would start. Hope that helps. Okay, so Evie asks, I have absolutely no experience in the industry. Is this going to be harder for me after I complete my course? Are there companies that are willing to hire people with no experience? Okay, so Evie, you have no experience in the industry right now versus completing Freight Broker Bootcamp, which is going to be easier to get hired and which is going to be easier to do the job after you get trained. Right now, you have nothing. Once you complete the training, you'll have a lot of information. You'll understand exactly how freight brokers make money. And at that point, you'll have a better chance to either start your own freight brokerage, become your own freight agent, or get hired by somebody, uh, you know, if you want to go take a W-2 job. Now, are there people that are willing to hire me with no experience? Yes. You can get hired on a W-2 basis as an employee locally and somebody that is a freight brokerage or freight forwarder or something like that or a carrier if you have some basic fundamental training like Freight Burger Bootcamp, uh, or you can become an agent. And yes, there are plenty of companies out there that will hire you with no experience. If you want to check out some of those companies, uh, go to, I would, uh, you could go to FreightBurgerBootcamp.com forward slash jobs. That is a job board that I put together specifically for freight brokers and freight agents. If you are a broker or an agent that is looking to hire people, you can post a free job ad there. If you are a broker or an agent looking to get hired, you can go there and apply to jobs, right? Because there are postings there that will allow you to do that. Um, some of them require experience. Some of them don't. So yes, I hope that helps. Okay, so Amanda Glover asks, I know rates change all the time, but I'm struggling with knowing good, bad lanes over all that I need to factor into my quotes. Okay, so here's the thing. The bigger the delta between the number of loads and the number of trucks, the harder it is. So if you have this many loads and this many trucks, if there's a big delta between them, then it's going to be harder to find equipment. But rates will be higher because there's more competition for those trucks. But if you go in and search a lane like Buffalo to Atlanta for flatbed and there's no trucks being posted in that lane, that's a good indicator that you're going to struggle covering that load, okay? So if you're not seeing capacity, truck capacity being posted daily in those lanes, then you probably shouldn't compete for those lanes unless you have a source of equipment or a source of trucks that are not part of the load board. But if you do source that lane, Buffalo, Atlanta for flatbed, and you see trucks are being posted regularly on a daily basis, even if there is a delta between the number of loads and the number of trucks, you now know that you're going to be able to cover that load. The number of trucks to the number of loads, that's, that's one of the things you're going to look at. You're going to look at as a new startup, you're going to be looking at, because that's where you're going to get most of your carriers as a startup is the load boards. That's how you're going to start. And then from there, you're going to develop relationships with those guys that you do business with. Uh, guys and gals. And then eventually you'll just use those people over and over again. But when you first get started, you're going to use load boards. So that load board is the greatest source of information for you to determine the viability of any given lane, not just from pricing, but from the ability to cover it. Because anybody can quote a price, but it doesn't mean you're going to cover the freight. If you can't source the trucks, it doesn't matter, right? But the higher the rates, the more likely you are to find trucks. Hope that helps. Okay. So Nate Davis asks, what is the bond for? Okay. So good question. There's a lot of mis misinformation and misunderstanding about the freight broker bond. The freight broker bond is designed to protect the motor carriers that you are doing business with. So for example, if I get a $75,000 freight broker bond, which is the requirement, okay, doesn't cost you $75,000. It's a, it's like an insurance product that probably costs you a thousand to $3,000, depending on your credit. 
But if you get a $75,000 bond, that bond guarantees the first $75,000 worth of invoices that the carriers send to you that they will be paid by the bonding company, even if you don't pay them. So if you were to run a bunch of loads and then not try to pay the carriers, the bonding company would be required to pay those invoices. That's what a bond does. It guarantees payment to the carriers. It has nothing to do with the shippers. So a freight broker bond has nothing to do with shippers. A lot of people think it has to do with shippers. It doesn't. It has to do with the carriers that you do business with. It's a tool to help protect carriers that do business with brokers. It's a guarantee of payment is basically what it is. That's why it's called a surety bond. Okay. Hope that helps. Let's wrap it up. Here's the last thing I'm going to leave you with. If you are just looking to get started as a freight broker, okay, and you don't have a lot of information and you you need some handholding and you need some guidance and you need the step-by-step -step process to get started as a freight broker freight agent, you can check that out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com, okay? Freightbrokerbootcamp.com, been in business over a decade. Um, we have trained over 10,000 students and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee, okay? That's the best I can get for you. Can't do any better. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week. And I'll see you on the inside.